One of the most enjoyable salmon species to catch are coho, especially when they're chrome silver in the ocean. They take a fly aggressively and they fight like no other salmon. We're on the Kitimat River targeting coho. That's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, Precision Reels. The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. And the Freshwater Fishery Society of BC. Catch what you've been missing, go fish BC. The thing about the Kitimat River is you have the opportunity to fish it from the boat or you can find some select bars. And Dale was uh, telling me earlier that we're probably going to set up in a couple of his favorite holes and just fish. So what, uh, what holes were you thinking of, Dale? Well, there's one below Hurst Creek. Like the water, again, it's been raining all week. Uh, water's very dirty, as you yeah. can see. It's all muddy. So our best bet is probably go in below Hurst, where Hurst usually comes in clean. Okay. And uh, hopefully we get a mixing of the water there. Right. And uh, that should help us with the water clarity somewhat. So we'll try there. So there's first you're looking for water clarity. And then it's where traditional holds, where the fish will hold. Right. And again, looking for the same thing, pocket water, riffle water, anywhere where the fish can rest before they, they uh, head up. The little difference here with fly fishing is you have to have riffle water in pockets rather than open flat areas where the, where the fish will sit, right? In the deeper areas where you can get them with gooey bobs and, and plugs and stuff. Yeah, you're better off to try to hit with flies. You know, you've got a limited window. You want kind of shallower water. Faster flowing is good, okay. where they don't get a long time to look at the fly and just kind of grab it as it goes by. Right. If you're using gear, they tend to stay in the bigger pockets where yeah, they can run Yeah, slower moving water. So with the gear you fly, you want shallower, obviously shallower, faster water compared to deeper, slower water. Well, that's what I prefer. Yeah. I like the faster flowing. I'm you know. with you, yeah. Excellent, so we'll show you a little bit further as we get along, so stay tuned. When we come back, hopefully we'll have a few fish on. What do you think? I hope so. <laughs> Big coal. Whoa! Big coal. Whoa, look at Whoa. him there. Whoa, man. I don't know if I'm going to get this guy. We may have yeah. to chase him. He's real big. I'll He's just let him pit. off. He'll come back up. Okay. Get over here, right up past the camera. Yeah. Like up oh, in here. Do you see the size of that coal? That's a monster. It's a monster. It's like yeah. a big. Did he go crazy? A big northern. He hit right in that little slot again. Ooh. Wow, silver, eh? Chrome. <laughs> you see him run? <laughs> <laughs> he was ripping a line. Get Looking this well into my backing. Like, that's what I mean when I tell everybody lots of backing, minimum 200 yards, and large arbor reels. What we have right now is sink tip lines and they're heavy grain. I've got a 400 grain and it's on an eight weight system. So quite a heavy tip. And we're not, again, we're not fishing very deep water, but it is fast. It's, uh, it's two to three feet deep, but fairly quick. And you want to make sure those flies are going in front of the fish. So you got to get them down. And with the faster current, sink tips work the best because you can cover more water. I find you can cast out further, cover a lot more water and sick tips work really good. Again, eight, eight nine weight rods are the ideal. Large arbor reels have to have them. And the big thing too is the fluorocarbon. Me and Dale started with the 15 pound and we found we busted two off. So we went to the 20 pound fluoro. Now one thing of warning, when you go to 20 pound fluoro, 
Be very careful because you can blow up a rod real easy with 20 pounds. Oh, he's right here. You watch what, oh, what, he's watch gonna go what crazy. happens when he touches these rocks yeah. here. He's going to be a little snarl up. Yeah, no, it's good. Just got he's a coming tight. over. All right, I'm going to go bowl. I'm going to try to make sure he keeps moving up. Like he's a nice fish, chrome. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. 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 <laughs> it's a big toad. Just try to get him up on the edge. Beautiful, nice uh. big hooked. He's a big one, Don. Big cool. Oh, I know. Beach him right up. Oh. Oh, 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 oh no! Let's be careful. He's a big coho, big, big uh, hook nose on him, big northern. He went right back to that current. We had him right here. This is where, this is where if you were keeping him, you have the big scoop net. Yeah. We'd have had him already. Wow, he just keeps going down. Wants to go back to the ocean. He'll come back over. What a fight. That is a big fish. He's over 20. Yeah. Oh, he's a, he's oh. a, oh, 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 oh. I can't even, look at oh. how thick that is. Oh, man. Look at that, right Look in the corner. That. Just right in the corner. Want to unhook him here? Good, good thing it was in the hard part of his jaw. Oh, oh. Look at that thing. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that big. Isn't that a beauty? And we've had a few of these on. That's yeah. the first one we've been able to get That's in. That's a gorgeous hey. fish. Look at that. Just sea lice was on him. Yeah. Took it off. Oh. That's what you call a chrome bullet, baby. <laughs> That's it. Isn't that a nice cold? Well, let's put her, let's move her out in deeper water. That's uh, a male, eh? He's got the big yeah, kite. Yeah, the kite, and look at the depth on him, the thickness. Yeah, so what do you have? Probably what? Well, that's 18? I'd say that's 18? at least 15 pounds 15. because of the weight, how yeah. thick he is, eh? Oh, I gotta hold that. Yeah, yeah, up here. If I can, can you get him? Yeah. I got okay, him. Got him? Yep. Oh, that's a... <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. That is a gorgeous fish, isn't it? Yeah, <sighs> cool. And deep. Yeah. Look at how deep that fish is. It's a nice little snout. Oh, what a fight. That was incredible. I love it. We've had a few of them oh, on. You know what? They're starting to come in now. Yeah. There's more and more. So let's let her go. Let her let them go. Look at that. Oh. The Man, water cold fresh. enough for you? Oh. <laughs> it's freezing. <laughs> yeah! yeah we finally, we finally landed one. Oh. It's noon. Noon. Good. Took you know us what? till. Because a few might be coming through. We've yeah. lost three of those that size. Big. All that same yeah. big. Yeah. Good, well, the coal are coming through. Let's get a few more. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice coal. Oh. 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 That's why we target coal. That is awesome. Another that nice is, big coal. Oh, as we mentioned on the intro, you know, it's all about coal over here. We've got such a great spot. And this is your traditional spot. This is your favorite spot out here. You on the come. kitty mat it is, yeah, on the I kitty like mat. it. Yeah. We had three holes on the way. We had the upper part, you know, below that creek that was fairly clean. You came down here and we just, you know, again, you look for the porpoising coal. Well, we came down on the drifting through. We were looking for any porpoising coal. We didn't see any. So then you said, let's go down to our favorite spot. We know they moved through there. The water level is high, so they're on the move. High and murky, so what I figure is if I know it, you know, if you're local to it, you know the pockets where you've always caught them before, just fish it. They're gonna move through. Even if it's murky, like, you know, we only have maybe a foot or two of visibility, but if you keep fishing those same holes, yeah. you know, the fish will move in there, so. Yeah, I love it, because this is a, a, what we call a migratory path. The fish have to come in this inside seam due to the fast water on the other side, so all the fish migrating up have to come through here. So all the coal lay behind these nice little logs and stumps and rocks, and we're picking them off. Well, I've got my fly line back. So I, I guess know. I better move over here. <laughs> yeah, let's go over. I'll go over get, there. I'll get the glove. Get the glove. We'll try to get back to the 
Oh, you gotta love it. Especially when they start running. You know, it's the end of August. Long weekend is really when they start moving, but right now is that you get all the chrome bullets coming yeah, through. Just I start, love it. start of the run. Yeah, the start of the run. Oh yeah. Not huge, but he's nice, eh? Nice chrome coal. Beautiful. Uh -oh. Whoa. Oh, he just went across the river on you. You know, the thing is here too, if you ever come to the Kitimat, call up one of the guides. They've got a bunch of guides in Kitimat. They have a lot of guides over in Terrace. It's actually ideal for what's going on because the guides know. They fish this river all the time. I know there's at least 10 or 12 good guiding outfits, so pick a guide up and he'll show you these great waters. If you come here on your own, they even had a canoe accident this year. They had some people floating down this river and the canoe flipped over and I think they lost some people. So you gotta be very careful. And that's why I really recommend a guide out here. If you don't have a guide or you don't know the waters, you can be in big trouble. So there make sure you get a guide. Right in front of you. Okay, I think this fish is ready. Oh. <laughs> Now that's what you call a tail walk. You know what, I have the glove on, but I don't think I'm gonna be landing them for another 20 minutes. Again. Unbelievable. Oh, you, Across you the to... river three times. Yeah. I've had my fly line back four times now. <laughs> the best time to come and fish the Kitimat, again, talk to the local guides, but the best time that we find is the middle of August right through until the middle of September. That's because we're targeting coal. We really enjoy the coal fishery here. It's one of the best coal fisheries on the west coast, the Kitimat River. So if you do, phone up the guides. They'll probably tell you to oh, come mid-August, all shore. the way to mid-September, and it's fantastic. You can see the pressure wake. Yeah, right over there. This is definitely, a, well, there he is there, yeah. This is a two-man operation. If you don't have two guys, oh. I don't want him to go again. Oh yeah. Oh. He's not ready yet. Oh, look at him out there, eh? Now that's a big fish. Wow. Getting close, Dale. No. <laughs> Okay, got him. All right. There's the pink fly. Right in his mouth. I'll just undo it here. Well, actually, I'll leave him buttoned here for a minute. Oh, no. I'll take it out. Tough for your jaw. Oh, there he is there. Oh, yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? Now that's a nice chrome bullet. So that guy's probably, you know, the 11, 10, 11. Yeah, another nice cool. Yeah, another nice cool, 10 to 11 maybe. Hey. Yeah. But look at that. It's got look the good at thickness. That. Look at the chrome, eh? Yeah. Isn't that Just gorgeous? Fresh in. Fresh in. You know, and that's There's the beauty. There's sea lights there. Yeah. They're on this side, see? Oh, there is. The sea lights right there, yeah. Oh, he just spit it off. Oh, but look at how nice and chrome they are. See, that's the beauty of coming here in, you know, mid to end of August, is yeah. you get these chrome bullets. You're not going to catch as many fish, but if, you, if you're willing to work a hole for, you know, a good hour or two, you're gonna pull out three or four of these in, a, in every hour. Yeah, and nice and ones like that, that. big like fights. Beautiful, try to keep them in the water. You know, they've, these fish have come a long way to do their thing. And, and look at this guy, he's just chrome. I'm gonna hold him up once more. Look at that. Chrome bullets, those are silver coho. And... <laughs> oh, he got me. He got him. Congratulations. Right. Well, you know, again, the whole, the whole show is on coho. We're king on the coho. And it's the patterns. You know, I think we should go to the bench now. We're always having success with pink and uh, purple. Yeah. And here's one of the smaller patterns. Now, this is one of our favorites. It has a bead head on it. You know, to get that fly down, it's, it's bead weighted. It's got the, ra the rabbit, the pink and purple rabbit. These combinations, and I can't stress it enough, I've said it on numerous shows, pink and purple are our go-to patterns. They are the first colors we go to for coho. Actually, for everything, steelhead, yeah. I mean, this is a great pattern. So let's go to the bench, and we're going to tie up a special little pattern.
Today on the bench we're going to tell you something a little different and it's a tube fly and it's called the coho killer. You need a special tube flying kit to actually be able to tie tubes and we use the one supplied by Umer. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. You'll need some crazy glue and a lighter to use for the tube pattern, a 20 millimeter by 4 orange cone head and body, some purple polar bear hair for the first wing, some pink purple flashy boo for the flash, for the hackle we'll use a burnt orange grizzly, some claret fox for the second wing, four strands of red ostrich hurl for the back, and an orange cone for the cone. The first step to the fly is assemble your tube and here's how we do it. We're going to take our, our thin material tube that's supplied, push it through the bigger orange tube that we have supplied. We're going to take our lighter and just burn the one end just to cause a little crease. Slide our, slide our orange tube onto that. So that actually gives us our fly tying base. Now we're going to take our wider tube supplied and before we put it on the, the tailing end of our orange body, we're going to put a, just a dab of super glue on there. And all this is going to do is hold that tube end so it doesn't fall off. Just wipe off a little bit of that super glue. Our tube is assembled and ready to put onto our vise. So all we do is slide this onto our vise until it becomes tight right to the end and we're ready for tying. Now that we have the body onto the tube flying assembly, we're going to take some 8 or actually 3 aught black thread and we'll start it right in front and just wrap it up, form a little, keep it thin, form a little base. Take a patch of your purple polar bear hair and measure it back so the purple polar bear just goes past the end of your, your thicker tube and just tie that in the front just so you have your first wing put in. Now that the purple polar bear hair is tied in, we're going to take our flash and I've taken four strands of my pink and purple flashaboo and I'm just going to put it under my thread just so I can wrap it equally on both sides and bring it to the back. Now what we want to do is when we cut this, we want to cut it in various angles just so that it's about the length or just a little bit longer than our polar bear and it should be varying, varying lengths. Take a burnt orange hackle and strip off the, the base and now we're going to tie it in again right, right behind the orange body. Cut off that excess and then wrap it forward to form the hackle. And as you're wrapping, keep pulling the hackle back. This way your hackle is going to splay out over the body and be palmered backwards which is what we want. After the hackle is tied in and pushed back, we're going to take a clump of our claret fox and again we want to measure this claret back so that it's just past our flashaboo tips and our purple, our purple uh, polar bear we put in earlier and then tie it in the front. Take four strands of your red ostrich hurl and again tie it in right at the, the head of the hook. And when you pull it back, we're going to cut these and they go right along the back and just cut them on an angle just a little bit longer than the fox we just put in. So it tapers back when it's in the water. To finish the fly off, we're going to go through two steps. We're actually going to whip finish our thread, cut it off, and then put the bead on. And to finish the bead, I'll show you that once we whip finish. So let's give it a whip finish and put the bead on. Now that your thread is tied off and you've got your bead onto your fly, what we're going to do is take it off, take it off the vise, and we're just going to cut the end of our tube near the bead. And then I'm going to take my lighter and just melt the end until I get a nice bead right down on top of the fly. And that holds it all together. And there it is, the finished coho killer. And it really does work well for the coho. If you don't have a tube flying kit, go to the umer.com site, that's E-U-M-E-R.com, and they'll set you up with all the things you need to be able to tie these tube flies. Ha ha ha!
another one. Yeah, I don't know. This guy has gone past the stump. Where is he? Yeah. He's way down there. Oh, yeah, look at, no, stay out of the stu woods. Well, get to shore, drag him up. He was right. Well, he's, he's below it, though. I gotta ease off. I gotta oh, yeah, he's coming. He's, yeah, he's way yeah. down there, but he's coming back a bit. <laughs> no. Gee, and right when the weather got nice, too, it's just actually cleared up here. You know, it's the mid-afternoon now, and it's looking pretty good. Geez, you caught me right in the middle of a nap. <laughs> oh, and I got, well, he's oh, right, yeah, he's the right stump. by the stump. Oh, we stuck with the flies. You know, we oh. stuck with the same flies. We know the cold of them. <laughs> Gonna be a while getting this guy in, I think. I might have to just try to drag him there, and you all might have to grab his tail on. Oh, yeah. Let's get this guy up. It's a little color, uh, coho. but another beautiful coho. Yeah, he's starting to get yeah. a little color, right, yeah, compared is. to the other ones. Yeah, he's got a little red. He must have been sitting there for a little while. Yeah. But look at that, beautiful fish. Real nice coho. Oh, we'll get him in there. Oh, I mean, look at him, just slightly colored. Yeah, just slightly so colored. So he might be in, might be in for a week, a week or so. There he is there, isn't that beauty? Very nice. Get him back in. And we see a few fish moving. Like, hopefully they're gonna start moving a little more tight. Where's a good, a good point is tide, there it goes. Tide just happened about, you know, an hour and a half ago, high tide. Yeah. So it's always good to go after high tide and, and see if you can get a few fish, but we're kind of running out of time. We gotta head back to camp. Yeah. But so thanks for the great day. Okay. We yeah. had a lot of fun, eh, Lots today? of fun, lots of cool hook. Yeah. Lost a few. And that's a big thing I wanna say is, if you want to come out for the coho, you can get them colored up, you know, in September. They, they, they kid them at loads full of coho in September, but they're, you know, they're mature, they're red. They're doing their thing. If you want to get real chrome bullets like we got today, come in the middle of August, middle to end of August, right? They're all moving through. Yeah, not yeah. as many fish, but you get the real big chrome yeah. bullets. So like this last color, that's yeah. more what you get in around September. Still a beautiful fish. Yeah. If you come here, take care, conserve the waters. If this is big water. It doesn't look like it, but it is tricky. We'll see you next time when you take a sport fishing on the fly. That's a pretty decent day. Pretty good day. <laughs> want more information? Visit us at sfotf.ca. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.